This is a voiceover video, so don't worry if the words are not in sync with my mouth. It is intentional. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and in this video I want to show you my latest creation, how it works and why you should have one, if you are using a mic of course. This is the portable noise reduction mic screen acoustic filter cover with an incorporated pop filter thingy that reduces background noise. Or how I like to call it, the Fork Shield. Fork Shield. I made this filter to reduce the background noise whenever I record a voiceover for my videos. I am also going to compare the sound quality with and without the shield, so stick around. Voiceover is a production technique where a voice is heard over the action that is taking place in the video. While he was taking a shower, little did he know that everyone was watching. Voiceovers are used in television productions, filmmaking, video games, theaters, and you can find loads of YouTube videos that use the voiceover technique in tutorials, presentations, inspirational videos, and other types of content. Audio editing softwares have some powerful filters that help reduce background noise. But during my research, I found one piece of advice that most professionals give very often. And that is to try and get the best sound quality possible on the audio before editing. And that is what I'm trying to achieve. A better recording means less post-production work, and the less unwanted sounds picked up by the mic also means I don't have to worry about the cars outside, or the children playing in the other room. And this gives me more freedom when I'm choosing the time for recording. The way I see it, a sound absorbing shield works in your advantage in two ways. It shields the mic from the surroundings, preventing unwanted sounds from being captured by the mic. And now you understand why I named it The Fart Shield. It leaves exposed only the area where the voice is coming from. In a voiceover scenario, only a small hole is needed. And second, the shield is made from a sound absorbing material that will prevent the sound inside the mic chamber from bouncing around and echoing. In most cases, this material is made from foam. There are a few types of professional sound absorbing screens out there, especially designed for studios, that help reduce background noise. Most of them are big, uncomfortable and don't really fit my purpose. I wanted something small, lightweight, that I can strap to my mic. And then, I found this interesting design that made a lot more sense to me. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. I have no idea how good it is, but it says it is professional, so... Anyway, I figured I can build one with what I have laying around the house. I can make my own design, it won't cost me anything, and that is what I do, after all. If I would buy this stuff, it would leave me with little ideas for my videos. That, and he is also cheap. Moving on. This was a fun project and it took me only 2 hours to build. It is easy to make and you can make it too as long as you have a sewing machine, a glue gun, some foam and a bit of textile material. For the shell I use some sofa tapestry textile material. This will also act as a pop filter. This is a standard pop filter. If you don't know, in voice recording a pop filter helps eliminate or reduce the plosives. Plosives are sounds that are made by stopping air flowing out of the mouth and then suddenly releasing it, creating a disturbing popping sound. Like the P's and the B's and the T's. The popping sound. Pop pop popity pop pop pop. Popity pop pop popping sound. So, I have to say I'm pretty glad to get rid of this annoying thing while I'm at it. Not to say that the basic pop filter weighs 255 grams, while the fart shield weighs only 65 grams. Going back to our story, I measured, signed and cut the shapes that I needed with an offset of 15 millimeters. The offset material is for reinforcing the shell with two sewing lines, like you have on your jeans. First, I'm sewing the side to the bottom, making something that looks like a bag. And as the story goes, everyone in the YouTube realm gathered to subscribe to his channel. After this, I measured, cut and fitted the foam inside the bag. The foam I used is 15 mm thick.
I used some hot glue to stick the foam pieces together. Cut the hole to fit the mic and use the lighter to seal the cutting area. This way the threads of the material won't unfold. After failing at sewing, I decided to make the top part simply by gluing the textile to the foam. The last thing was to add a hole in the foam sidewall. This will be the only area where the mic will not be shielded and it will be directed towards my mouth when I'm recording. I added some more foam inside the shield for a better fit and it also keeps everything straight. And now for the test. This is the difference between having and not having the fart shield. The fart shield. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and if this video was helpful to you, you can give it a like, leave me a comment. And if you want to support my channel, you can always become a Patreon, you will find the link in the description. Thank you for watching!